Dan Goodwill joins John and I this week on the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. And as he says, he's been in this crazy business for more than 40 years. Let's get right to the interview. Welcome to the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Well, good morning, Dan. Glad you could join us, uh, Chris and I. So for our folks that are listening here today, let's give a little background on Dan Goodwill and, and the operation that he runs. Sure. My pleasure. Hey, great to be with you fellows this morning and really looking forward to it. So I've been in this crazy business now for 40 years, believe it or not. I started in the trucking business, spent my first 22 years in the trucking business. I worked my way up with uh, the old Overland Express to become director of sales and VP sales mm -hmm. and worked with the old TNT organization, was general manager of TNT RailFast. Um, moved to the Clark organization, spent nine years with them and uh, was uh, president of Clark Logistics, which was their kind of their freight broker intermodal marketing business. And then uh, got a call from a headhunter in Chicago, Illinois. And the next thing I was, I was president of Yellow Freight in Canada. <laughs> and so I did that for a few years into the early 2000s and then uh, decided to time to set up my own consulting company, which I did, Dan Goodwin Associates. And we kind of wear two hats. We work with shippers and help them with their freight programs, help them become more efficient and save some money on freight. Yep. And we help trucking companies and logistics companies with business development and helping them improve profitability. So that's what's kept me busy, fellas, for the last wow. four years. And it's quite a ride. I've had a lot of fun. No doubt, no doubt. Multiple hat wear here over the years. Yeah. Well, back in my early days, I too was at a TNT division. TNT, of course, had uh, multiple divisions right across the world. Well, not yes, yeah, right, right across the world, but here in Canada, they had a lot of divisions. Yeah. And I was there. I didn't work. Um, I worked for a small little outfit of TNT at the time. But uh, and then that's who I was safety. I was in the TNT safety department for TNT okay. Canada. That's where I cut my teeth on safety Very back good. in the old days. Well, I'm sure we crossed paths and we just probably uh, don't remember, but I'm sure we crossed paths in, in the eighties somewhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what it was. Uh, Claude Chalk. Do you, does that name ring a bell? Yeah. Vaguely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Well, he was my boss and um, Don Newsom. Oh, Don Newsom, I knew very well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Don was my VP when I was in safety. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, we've, we've got similar, uh, what do you call that? Not heritage, but yeah, heritage might be a good word. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Dan, what, in, what intrigues me was what you had said about you work with shippers. So if I'm a shipper, why would I reach out to Dan Goodwill and Associates? Great question. And I'll, I'll give you the answer right here, which is, <laughs> um, we, over the years, we get a lot of calls and most often they are from, let's say, uh, VP finance or president or CEO. And it's a very similar conversation. They'll say to me, Hey, Dan, we're spending, um, 18 million to $18 million a year on freight. And, uh, we have a good guy. We got Joe over there in the corner has been running the freight transportation department for 25 years. I think he's doing a pretty good job, but I'm not sure that we're getting the best bang for our buck. Not sure that we, uh, couldn't be a little bit more efficient in managing freight. And the conversation usually goes along the lines of, uh, hey, that's exactly the kind of work we do. And, you know, myself and, some of my colleagues will be happy to come in and see what you're up to and see what you do and try to help you do it a little bit better. And so we've had many projects like that. A lot of fun. Well, how cool. So they're looking to streamline an $18 million shipper. How do you go about that? What, what are some of the things? Sorry, here's my thought process. If I'm a trucking yep. company, Yep. I'm interested in what you're telling that shipper, because of course I've got to work for the shipper and yes, I never make as enough money. So here Dan's going in there telling them how to save money. 
is what I heard, but I'm sure there's a lot more to it than that. Oh, no, absolutely. I think that, uh, I mean, the first thing, you know, we understand is that, uh, when we talk to the VP finance, they will say, you know, Dan, um, our, let's say our $18 million or our $30 million we're spending on freight is say, you know, somewhere between, between two and 10% of our revenue. So it's a big, it's a big amount of money. Okay. And, uh, and, you know, our, over the years, our clients have spent, you know, are spending typically between say five and a hundred million dollars on freight. And so what I, you know, what I'll say to the VP of finance typically is, I think the first thing you need to understand is that freight transportation. Yeah, I know you're spending say 3% and your 3% equals 18 million bucks. And it's a lot of money, but understand one thing, freight transportation is a variable expense. It's not a fixed cost. Mm -hmm. And so there are a variety of things you can do to help you save money on freight. And I should, you know, just so for the audience listening in, just be very clear about it. Uh, you know, some people may be looking at me and say, well, here, he's Dan's the, probably the kind of guy that comes in and tries to <laughs> beat up on all the carriers. Yeah. Right. And, you know, so, okay. Sometimes we'll have a conversation, definitely have a conversation about rates. Of course. I mean, that's part of it, but there's so much more to managing freight than just beating up a carrier on rates. I just want everybody to understand that when we go in, there's all kinds of things we look at to try to help these folks save money and we can often save them five, 10% on their expenses. Sometimes in one case, we couldn't believe it, but at the end of the time and the exercise, we walked away, we'd save them 40% on their freight costs. Wow. Jeez, that's so a that lot. Was, that's the all-time record, I have to say. But yeah. that was, you know, um, and, that, and just to give you guys an idea, the kind of things we look at. So we, we, we try to look at the whole gamut. We look at things like, you know, the freight itself, how is the freight packaged? Is it packaged safely? You know, is there, is there too much air in the package? Is it, can it be loaded properly? Can it be double stacked? Can you, are you cubing out the trailer? Are you, are you efficient in how you're packaging and loading your freight? We'll look at their data. We'll do a deep dive into their data. We'll look at how they're moving their freight. We'll look at like, you know, we see shippers, for example, that uh, running LTO freight to the same place every day. And we say, why are you doing that? Like you, you can consolidate and your freight will get to Edmonton or Calgary or Winnipeg on the same day. You don't have to do that. Um, you can consolidate. Why are you moving everything over the road? You know, yeah. in certain days of the week, you could use intermodal. Why are you doing that? We'll see things that'll jump out at accessorial charges that are completely out of whack, things of that sort. So there's that whole data piece where we try to identify what can they do smarter. Then there's the organization. And, you know, as I said, a lot of times people say to me, hey, Dan, Joe or Bob or Bill over in the corner, he's been doing a great job for a million years. What we try to find out is, has he been doing the same thing for 25 years? Uh, mm -hmm. Does, the, does Joe or Bob have the knowledge? Does he have the experience? Is he doing the right things? And, and, and so we, we look at that. And then we look at all of the processes that the company has. Uh, how are they procuring freight? How do they select carriers? Um, how, what's their dispatching process? How are they contacting the carrier? Uh, how are they managing their freight? How are they tracking their freight? Are they looking at what they're spending? Are they looking at carriers that are double charging or overcharging or mm -hmm. things of that sort? Are they looking at the performance of the companies that are working for them? And of course, uh, their overall freight expenses. Um, when's the last time you looked at the market and what the market will bear for your freight? Are you doing that? Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of things we, we have that kind of discussion and we try to help shippers improve in each of these areas and, and 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 we've never been to a shipper where we haven't found something and in some cases we found a lot uh you know there's opportunities to save money on freight and none of what i heard you say was you weren't beating down the trucking company mm -hmm. you were mm -hmm. just making the shipper more efficient yeah that's right 
That's right. And, and I think I, let, let's just talk about this whole thing about beating down the carer. Um, so, you know, to be totally transparent, yes, we've done a number of uh, freight RFP or freight bid exercises. And I know for a lot of carers, that's a dirty word. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of the villain when I get involved with something like that, but I think, you know, I think it's important for, for carers to understand when we do these exercises, these freight bit type exercises, um, we, you know, we have multiple meetings with the shipper and we try to get into the shipper's head and we try to understand who are your, who are your core carriers? Who are those key carriers that are most important to you? And we try to understand your relationship with some of your carriers. Is it transactional? Is it just, you got a load to move? And so you go, you know, go on the internet or you just post a load and give it to anybody. Or are these regular moves, your, you know, two loads a week to Moncton or your three loads a week to Winnipeg or whatever it is. So who are the real key guys? Who are the ones that are doing a good job for you? And who are the guys that mean most to you? So when we go through this exercise and we come to the end of the exercise, you know, you will have rates and oftentimes we'll have rates that it would be let's say, better than what the core carriers are paying. And so the shipper's got a dilemma. Like you, you can say, well, carrier A's rates are 5% better than carrier B, which is the company carrier. What should I do? What, what do I do? I like carrier B, but I can say 5%. And so I think it's important for you know your, your carriers that are listening to understand that there are shippers out there that are very enlightened. You know, there, there, yes, there are shippers that all they care about is the lowest buck. And I'd be a liar to say that's not the case. Of course, yeah. that's the case. There are guys that are bottom feeders. And, and, and the trouble is when you feed off the bottom, you get something off the bottom. Mm -hmm. you, know, and, you know, the old adage, you get what you pay for. Yeah. So yeah. If you select a low quality carrier that doesn't have the assets, that doesn't have the technology, then you're getting what you're paying for. You're getting mm -hmm. a lower price, but yep. you know, that you're, you're not going to get the service. But you know, what I've seen with my, you know, enlightened shippers that kind of get it, which is they say, you know, Dan, I think you should go back to this carrier and say, there's a bit of a rate differential and, you know, maybe they could adjust their rates a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, you know, in some cases, carrier and shippers will say to me, you know what, Dan, that carrier does a hell of a job for me. You know, on mm -hmm. Friday night when I need those extra trailers, I get them. When I need a pickup on a Saturday, he does that for me. My people love working with their people. He thinks their people are great. And so, you know what, Dan, at the end of the day, yeah, I'm prepared to pay them more. So let's stick with Carrier B. They're a good company. I know I got to pay a few bucks extra, but I want to stay with them. I should mention too, just so your carers know, I, I do, I do freight bid work for both sides of the fence. So sometimes <laughs> there are carers that'll come to me and say, Dan, I got this freight bid. It's so complicated. Can you and your guys help me? And so, yeah. and so we've done that too. Sure. Of course, we never work on both sides on the same front. <laughs> <product. laughs> that would be a I mean, like, like conflict of interest there, wouldn't come it? On, so. Come on. But, yeah. Yeah. but I think just so you understand, I mean, that's, that's kind of how things work and, and we, we, Come to the end of the exercise and, um, and we'll say to, you know, say to the shipper, uh, and also we'll say to look, you know, you've got good carers, but you really should surround yourselves with some backup carers. And some shippers have trouble with that. Well, Dan, you know, like if I use a backup carer, then I'm going to be spending more money. Like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that guy's rate is a little bit higher than my company. Yes, that's very true. But what happens, especially what we've seen in the last few years where we've had um, driver shortages, capacity shortages, carers having trouble covering all their loads, smart shippers say to themselves, I better have some backup care. Well, Good ones. Well, you and, count on. And right now, we might be going into a recession. And if we do, will that cause... Uh, any bankruptcies in the future. So again, I think that's a uh, smart advice on your part to say, Hey, yes. you need a backup because you never know 
what happens. Well, it's interesting what, what Dan's talking about because it, it goes right into in a line with what I used to do when I had my trucking company. Now, you know, we, we specialized in overdimensional open deck freight, uh, step decks, double drops, not, but one of the things that was really key to me was the relationship with that customer, that shipper per se, or even it might even be a receiver, right? They're buying product from somebody and they want you to haul it down to their location for them. But one of the things was when we talked about pricing, you know, yeah, we were a little bit more and I didn't want to be transactional. I wanted that relationship with them. So it hits on what you're talking about is building that relationship to the point where, you know, each side is dependent on upon one another for good. No, not good for great service, right? Absolutely. And the thing that needs to be taken into account, and a lot of people on the trucking side don't see this because they think it's covered in another fashion, is damage. When you have damage to the cargo, that costs the customer, the shipper, because now, well, I've got to replenish that damage. It might be covered by insurance or the carrier is going to pay it out of their pocket, but it creates an inconvenience. And now it also create strain with the shipper and their customer because somebody's now starting to question every third shipment we have this problem why are you continuing to use this carrier if they're not doing the right job so you know it may not cost them or or, or save them or cost them anything in their shipping prices but it is affecting their reputation and their relationship with their customer absolutely right there's a, there's no doubt about it that uh Smart shipper realizes that, uh, you know, the carrier is really customer facing. It's the, it's the direct interface with their suppliers and their customers. And so yeah. how that yeah. carrier comes across, uh, the way the driver conducts himself, uh, you know, is he professional? Is he polite? Um, you know, how he interacts, the dispatcher, the relationship, just like you said, John, those are, those are key, key pieces of a good relationship and yeah i know like the, you know this whole relationship thing has been kind of tested the last few years and, and it's tested really you know, it's, i'm glad you mentioned that word because it's tested all the time so like for example you you do one of these rfp exercises and you award the freight and then a couple of months later a carrier walks in you know the carrier sales people are always calling on uh on shippers and the carrier salesman walks in and says, uh, can I just give you a rate quote? Let me, I, I'd really like to do some work for you. So they give shipper a rate quote and it's 5% less or 10% less, whatever it is than what he's paying today. So the shippers awarded the freight, got a nice relationship with the carrier. What does he do? He's got a rate quote. He can save his mind, save some money, look like a hero to his boss. And that's where. You know, that's where on the shipper side, that's where this relationship, you know, you, you test the relationship and, I, and, 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 and in fairness too, you see it on the carrier side where, you know, I'm working for a carrier and they, they land an account. So they're, they, they committed to move three loads a week to Calgary for this particular shipper, but they just land a new account that's paying, um, 30 cents a mile more to Calgary or $50 a load or $80 a load more to Calgary. So you say to yourself, gosh, I've only got this number of pieces of equipment. If I may move this piece of equipment for this shipper, I could make more money for the shipper down the road than for the shipper that awarded me this business. Mm -hmm. Who, by the way, I've been doing business with for five or 10 years. So that's where, that's where it, the relationship gets tested on both sides and you see what kind of relationship you really have. Yeah. But if you built a, a relationship based on honesty and trust uh, and transparency, fairness, and you, and you respect each other, if the shipper really respects the carrier, you know, he might have a conversation say, you know, I think your rates are a little out of line, but you're, you know, you run a great company. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to injure you guys in any way. Yeah. Uh, but too many times you see, you know, a knee jerk reaction on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Right. When, when uh, times were a couple of years ago, uh, yeah. carriers got greedy. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And, yeah, how, how are you, how are you seeing 
uh, in that relationship between the carrier and the shipper. Yeah. How are you seeing um, the conversation of safety management coming in? And, and in particular, I want to focus on, on a particular area, and that's with safety carrier profiles or carrier safety profiles. So your CVR, your SMS profiles and whatnot. Those are the government documents that kind of give me a quick report card of how you're doing. Because a perfect example of that would be a shipper starts to notice that um, this one carrier is starting to become late a little more frequently, right? They're not making their deliveries on time. And yep. when you focus back to find out why, it's like, oh, yeah, well, we're getting pulled in at the scales. They're doing full inspections. It's cutting me back by an hour. You know, we're, yep. our timelines are tight. And now all of a sudden this is happening. Or you get the odd one that, oh, well, we've got to reschedule the whole appointment because now my truck's out of service because of a brake defect or whatever. Be. How many shippers are you seeing that are starting to focus on looking at those safety carrier profile documents to help them determine that relationship with that motor carrier? Okay, that's a great question. So there's there's a couple of sides to that. And first of all, I should mention, like we deal with a very select group of shippers. We only do work, you know, we're a small company. We only work with a select group of shippers every year. Sure. But one thing we do, you know, when we get asked to do, let's say an RFP exercise, and every one of these, we ask for, the CVOR of every carrier, okay, that's putting in a bid. And we, we ask them uh, for, you know, some detailed information about their, their technology, their IT capabilities, their service, um, on-time service performance. We, we ask for all of that information. And, you know, I mean, there's a lot that, you know, there's a lot that can get hidden underneath a CVOR number. As you guys know better than I do, <laughs> but you, you know, you, you, you ask for that upfront and then the, the, and what also I, I encourage shippers to do is, you know, shippers say, you know, Dan, and we haven't been happy with the carrier that's doing Quebec. We're not happy. Like we're, we have a lot of freight that moves to Eastern, Northern Quebec, yeah. and, uh, we have to make a change. And, and, and we've had some issues there. Like they may say, we've had some safety issues. We had some damage issues. And I'll say to them, I'll say, look, you know what? Before you award the freight to anybody, you've got a few carriers or you don't know them. And I may know them. I may not, I may not know them. I say, let's do this. Let's give them a trial. Let's try them for several months and see how they do. And then, and I say, with this trial, you you have your scorecard. You do your tracking, your on time service tracking, and so on. Um, track, see how they do. Watch your claims. Watch your on time service performance. Also, yeah, look at things like when you when you have a load to be picked up. Do they respond? Do they come or do they turn you down? Can you are you going to be able to rely on them to pick up your freight? So. I, I think that's, you know, you got to do kind of a holistic job on this and yep. this whole safety thing, just to look at a CVR and CVOR number in and of itself. You fellows would know it may be a bit misleading. I mean, you get, you know, you get a satisfactory or whatever it is that may not tell the whole story. Exactly. Yeah. You got to look deep. You tell the whole story across Canada. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, you know, all I say to the shippers is, uh, You've had problems. Do your homework. Don't mm -hmm. rush into. I know you want to award the freight and get on with it, and you want to get out of this RFP exercise and get on with managing your freight. I get that, but you also owe it to your company to do a thorough job, to do the job right, and make sure that the carriers that are doing the moving the freight for you are safe carriers, on time carriers that are going to do a good job. That's kind of how I see it. Well, I'm that may not always be the lowest price carrier. You know, mm -hmm. it costs money to have a good CVR score or yes. a, a SMS score. Um, there's a lot of co costs involved in trucking, as we all know. So, yep. it, you know, and, and the good shippers, I got to believe, recognize that it does cost money. And as you said earlier, I don't think it's always um, the good shippers recognize that the lowest price isn't always the best price. 
Oh, no doubt about it. I, you know, when I, when I work with shippers, I mean, we, you know, I say to them, look, these are the things we got to look at. We've got to look at their fleet. We got to look at their capacity. We got to look, especially now, like things have really changed the last few years. So it's hard to get drivers. It's hard to get good drivers. It's hard to get drivers to stay with you as, you know, turnover and so on. So can you count on this fleet? Yeah, they got the right equipment. What's their driver turnover ratio? Um, what's their on-time service look like? Employee responsiveness, claims, billing, which is, you know, oftentimes a problem. You wouldn't believe it, but it, it oftentimes can be a problem. Safety, technology, and technology is becoming more and more important. And I think this is, this is going to be a key factor in the years ahead is that some of the little guys are going to have a tough time keeping up with the big guys in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, modern technology. And, you know, we're moving into a new era now. There's all kinds of new stuff going on, digital freight matching and all this sexy stuff. And uh, so, you know, are, the, are the, the smaller guys going to be able to keep up um, communication, you know, all, all of these things. Uh, and I also, you know, with my, my customers I always say, look, have to have a scorecard. You have to have quarterly meetings. You have to track. You can only manage what you measure. If you're not yep. measuring uh, yep. a character and all of these exactly. attributes, um, yep. uh, you know, you make a mistake. And, 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 I'll, and I'll say to the carers I work with too is you're proud of your company. You're proud of the service you give and the way you operate. You should be initiating these kind of meetings with your shippers. Mm -hmm. You should. Mm -hmm. Okay. Don't wait for them. Take yeah. the initiative. You go in and say, we want to talk to you. We want to show you. We want to show you what we've done for you in the last quarter. Yeah. Can you give us a few minutes to do that? Okay. And, um, and I also encourage carriers to, uh, look, don't just leave the relationship at the lowest level. Don't just leave it at dispatcher to dispatcher. Get your operations manager to go in and have a rapport with the shipper. When's the last time your, your VP, your VP of operations went to that shipper and visited the shipper? When's the last time the president, if it's a big customer, has your president been in to that shipper? Does he, does he know the president of that shipper? He should, you know, he really should. He should have her up for and talk yep. to him periodically and pick up the phone and say, you know, I work for, I am president of ABC truck lines. Mm -hmm. Is my company doing everything we can to help you out? What can I've, we do I've known better. I've I've known one motor carrier that actually has their safety director involved in those meetings with their clients. Hundred percent to be able to promote how they are being a safe operation, safe people to protect the motoring public and your cargo. You know to make sure it's safe because we know your families are on the road with our drivers. So yeah, they promoted that. So I agree with it. It's all about that relationship. It's all about it. And, and, uh, it's, and that way it's not just a numbers game. I mean, you know, some of these carers over the years said to me, oh, Dan, you know, geez, uh, all these shippers want to do is, you know, is reduce my rate and get me out of here. And no, it's not that way. It, it, if you built a solid relationship, if you're doing yeah. a good job, the good shippers I worked with want to have good carers working for them. There's yeah. no percentage of having bad carers that don't deliver that, yeah. you know, they Guy's driving through Arkansas and he stops for a day or two to visit his girlfriend on, 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 on route to the yeah. yeah. You know, like that doesn't do anybody any good. Yeah. Well, what, what, what a little story, story I'd like to share from back in my day, I, I worked with a shipper and uh, we, we built a very tight relationship. And one of the things was we were hauling these, uh, they were, they were um, a platform piece. Uh, they were 10 feet wide. And so we were hauling them over dimensional, right? And, and we had to haul them from here to wherever, and we always had to meet a crane at the other end. And one of the problems that we had was we had to travel. We couldn't travel at night, so we had to always coordinate things and move things out. And there were times where, you know, it was tight on the shipping time, and we had to get it out there as quick as possible while we moved the crane to noon rather than the first thing in the morning. One of the things that we sat down with them and we said, look, we think there's a better way to ship these, these pieces you guys are manufacturing. And we were running a lot of step decks, and we said, if we stood them up, on an A-frame, we could we can handle 10 feet high. We could stand them up. We could reduce your costs, re get rid of the, 
the uh, the permits that we needed. And we could be sitting on their doorstep first thing in the morning for the crane. That would help us get our reload picked up and on our way back for the next day. So we would save time. You would save money. And, and it was interesting because that conversation got us so much more work from that customer because we dedicated to work with them on helping them save money as well. Absolutely. No, I think that's a fantastic point. And, and you know, I, I, see the, I see the same thing to my clients is that, look, and my shipper, my carrier clients say, look, hey, um, if you see something, you know, just like you mentioned, John, if you see something when you're out on the dock or whatever, um, that could save the shipper money. I know you say like, why are you trying to save a shipper money? You're yeah, trying to get yeah. the rates up. Yeah. Well, no, that's, that's, it. if you can save the shipper money that, so that it's a win-win, yep. the shipper's going to love you. You know that? Oh yeah. I mean, all yeah. the only hear from carriers is I want a rate increase. Rates yeah. are going up 4.5% this year, 6.5 or whatever it is. But if you can say to the shipper, look, if you let me, if I can drop some trailers in your yard, if I can do this, if you know, uh, if you can give me a better appointment delivery time or pickup time, you know, like you see, when you do these projects, you see some crazy things. I mean, for example, um, I was working with a manufacturer in the States a few years ago, and they had a, uh, a warehouse about two, 300 miles away. And so they do deliveries to this warehouse. They own the warehouse. They own their manufacturing plant. They own the warehouse. So I'm looking at their data. I'm seeing all these accessorial charges, all this waiting time at their warehouse. I'm saying, isn't this your warehouse? Yes. Yeah. Why are you paying waiting time to deliver to your warehouse? Why are you doing it? And the, and the answer was that the guy that was running the warehouse was just wasn't doing a good job in this whole appointment delivery thing. Those were chaotic. So carers were coming into a company owned warehouse and they were paying through the nose for excess waiting time. So it's just a case of if you're working with a shipper and you see things, point them out because yeah. chances are it'll save you money. Your driver won't be sitting in the yard three or four hours, wasting time on the clock, especially now with ELDs and all this, you're being tracked up the yin yang. Uh, so, you know, you want to make sure your drivers are super efficient, help each other out. And, and, and I, and I think too, like, I, I know like a lot of times it's shipper meetings, shippers will say to the carrier, do you got any suggestions on things we could do better? And what I encourage carriers to do is say, you know, I'd like to just point something out to you. I, I'd like mm -hmm. to just bring something to your attention. I think we you and me could save money together if we did such and such. I think the carrier would find the ship would find it very refreshing and it would cement the relationship. Oh, big time. I, I was going to say, add, add to that. I've known a couple of uh, motor carriers where, you know, the, the CEO or president of the company is, uh, came up through the ranks as a driver and not afraid yeah. to get into a truck. Um, I know we could probably come up with a whole bunch of guys that still do that. When you have a relationship with your customer and you've got an issue, jump in the truck, be a driver for the day, go over oh, to that location. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you walk in and go, oh my God, okay. I could call the CEO of that shipper up and go, hey, Bob, how's it going? Ah, oh, Don, how are you doing? Great. Yeah. I was just overloading a load over at this warehouse. And wow, there's some inefficiencies going on. Can I help you? You know what? Like That, that is so true. I had a, I, I won't mention the names here, but they're a name brand shipper and a name brand character. And so what would happen is this carrier, they'd land a new piece of business, a uh, nice, you know, nice truck, piece of truckload business, steady, good revenue paying truckload business. So the CEO was, who came up through the ranks as a driver would go and pick up one of the first loads yep. and tell the shipper all about it and go and meet with that shipper. And so he, he would cement the relationship with the shipper. He would, he would himself become knowledgeable about what the shipper's operation, the dock operation, you know, the number of dock, you know, doors available and so on. That was the smartest thing the guy ever did. I know it's, you say, well, as a CEO of a trucking company, got time to get in a truck and go and pick up a load. Well, you know what? It was the smartest thing the guy ever did. Yep. You make time. Yeah. You make time. 
And I think that's a great spot to bring this interview to a conclusion. Dan Goodwill of Dan Goodwill and Associates. Um, your contact info is in the show notes down below. So people who've watched this show can reach out to you, get some help. Last word to you, Dan. What didn't we say yet that you would like to get out there? You know what? I think we could just repeat what we said earlier, which is it's all about relationships. Yeah. I yeah. think if there's one theme to what we talked about in the last half hour, it's, you know, uh, as a carer, focus on these relationships, build strong relationships at all levels in your organization. Yeah. And if you get good service backed up with a strong relationship, you're going to hold on to your accounts and you're going to have happy, happy customers. Well, it, yeah. and I'll tell you the thing that I heard that I don't think enough carriers do is keep a scorecard of their performance with the shipper and then on a regular basis, meet with that shipper yeah. and do a little bit of bragging. And I don't want to, it, it, it is bragging, but it displaying the truth on what a great job you are to cement that relationship. hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. And listen, it's oh, been a pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure talking well, with you fellows this morning, by the way, I've had a blast. Oh, All right. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate your time. You bet. My Aaron. pleasure. All right, guys. Take care. Thanks very much. That, of course, was Dan Goodwill from Dan Goodwill and Associates. What a great interview. Dan's got so many insights from his 40 plus years in the business that he is now available to you. All right. That was great. Thanks, Dan, so much. That's it for this week on the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. See you next week.